The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord is triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I will give thanks to you for your answer me. You come my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous. It is astonishing. It is amazing. It is miraculous in our eyes. For on this day, Easter day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day of days, the feast of feasts, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is victor over death. He is victor over life. He has triumphed over the grave. He has carried our sins through that tomb and now brings us back to his Father now and always. Everything changes because of these acts. Everything changes because of this day. Everything changes because of this holy resurrection. The first fruits. That's him. The first fruits of God's new creation, of God's redemption, of God's plan to restore, to redeem, to resurrect us and his world. Jesus comes first. He leads the way. But because of him, we know the way to go. It's because of Easter. That's why we gather on a Sunday. That's why we sing and we praise and we pray. That's why there's bread and wine. That's why there's light. That's why there's candles. That's why there's flowers. That's why there's bells. That's why there's brunch. Because this is Easter day. And on Easter, everything changes. The course of human history, it changes. The course of all creation, it changes. The course of our very lives, they change because of this day. The day of days, the feasts of feasts. That God hears the cries of his people and he answers them. Answers them with his own life answers them with his own death and then breaks that death so that we won't have to taste it, not forever. Jesus drinks that death down to its dregs and leaves nothing for us so that instead we might follow him the first fruits of God's new creation. The first fruits of God's redemption and of God's resurrection. This is the day where God says, I am not done with the world. I am not done with you. Everything changes here. Everything changes now. We come together on a Sunday, and in essence, what we're doing is celebrating a little Easter every time. Why Sunday? Because that's the day that Jesus rises from the dead. Why say these prayers? Because that's when Jesus rises from the dead. Why sing these songs? Because Jesus has risen from the dead, everything changes. History, creation, our lives, everything changes. The same stone which the builders rejected. The same stone that has been cast out Nailed to a cross to bleed, to die. Laid in a stone cold tomb. That stone, that Christ, that Lord has become the chief cornerstone. And everything that might be connected to Him, built from Him, through Him, we would be strong, we would be solid, we would be straight. For He is our cornerstone will bind us together and will give us that foundation in this life and in that life to come. It can never be moved. It can never shake. It will never fall or fail. 
He is the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. Not our own. But God Almighty Himself has done this for us. And it is marvelous. It is astonishing. It is amazing and it is miraculous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. Let us rejoice. And be glad. Let us sing. And be glad. Let us pray and praise and be glad. Let us have some chocolate and hunt for some eggs and be glad. Let us light some candles, plant some flowers and be glad. Let us ring some bells. Let the whole earth resound to the praise of Christ and be glad. Because this is the day. Everything changes because of this day. Even our weeks start not on a Saturday, not on a Monday. They start on a Sunday. Because in Jesus, new life, new creation starts here again. It's the beginning of our work week. It's the beginning of our lives. It is the beginning of God's new creation. And everything points back to that. Everything points back to these moments. Everything points back to Him. For Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. And that's why we shout forth with hallelujah. That's why we shout forth with Praise to God. That's why we sing these songs and we ring those down. This is worth it. This day is worth it. These acts are worth it. He is worth it. Allow me to pray. Close your eyes, please. With your eyes still closed, tell me what you see. This was your destiny. This was your destination. Separated from God and separated one from another. This is where we were all justly and deservedly headed. Darkness, nothingness, death, emptiness, gone. Now open your eyes and I'll tell you what I see. I see the light. I see the flowers blossoming and you. I see the family of God. I see friends. I see love. I see our new destinies. Our new destination. Because Christ has broken the power of the grave. It's not the darkness, it's not the nothingness, it's not the eternal death any longer. Not for us. Not for we who will follow the first fruit into that new creation and into that new redemption. What we will see is His light. What we will see is beauty blossoming. What we will see is the body of Christ knit together by His Spirit. We will see family. We will see friends. We will see love. That's Easter. That's where it all comes from. It all comes from this day. It all comes from this moment. It all comes from these mighty acts. Where God has become our salvation. Taking our lives. Taking our sin. Taking our brokenness. Taking our wickedness. Taking our faults. Taking our failures. Taking our deaths and our graves. And replace them with a new destiny, with a new destination, with His light, with blossoming beauty, with family, with friends, with His body gathered here in this place and His love. That's Easter. And it's worth lighting candles, it's worth planting flowers, it's worth singing songs, praying prayers, eating brunch, hunting eggs. It's worth ringing bells. And it can seem, I don't know, a little blasé, I guess. Can it be taken for granted? I mean, maybe it's exciting because it's Easter, or maybe it just feels like, eh, you know, kind of springtime, I guess. 
The calendar says it's Easter, but I, I guess. I mean, I can never calculate Easter anyway. It's the first full moon after the equinox, and if the groundhog sees his shadow. Was, I don't know, but it keeps changing every year, and sometimes it's late, sometimes it's early, and this one's kind of early this year. And if it seems that way, we're just doing it because it's time to do it. We ring our bells because Father Day says bring bells. We put up these flowers because, well, we emptied it up for Good Friday. We might as well make it look nice because extra people are coming. <laughs> <laughs> then we miss the true profundity of this day and of this day. Because we are, in essence, celebrating the resurrection every single Sunday when we gather, we can lose the true power of that first Easter, that day of days, that feast of feasts, what the Lord himself does, which ought to be marvelous and astonishing and amazing and miraculous in our eyes. And maybe it gets lost in the day to day, and maybe it gets lost in the week by week or seasons of the year, or, well, the calendar says it's time to buy some chocolate and to expect the bunny. But this is the day stone which has been rejected has now become chief of the corner, holding us, binding us, supporting us, connecting and uniting us one to another and each other to God our Father. Strong, solid, stable, straight, unshakable in this life and in life eternal. God Almighty has acted. And we ought to rejoice. We ought to be glad. It might seem kind of silly to ring a bell. It might even feel a little weird, especially when a little tiny funeral bell. <laughs> but I think we need to understand this for a moment. I think we need to ponder and consider for a moment that what these bells do, whether small or large, quiet or loud, are in essence responding from our spirits, from our hearts, and from our lives. If creation resounds with the praise of God, we do that on at least this morning. We could and should and maybe even would do it every single day if we only remember. But try it. Bring just a little. Just a little. A little more. just kind of light and kind of nice. And again, maybe if these were larger bells, it would feel a little more significant possibly. But I want us once again to consider why we are ringing these bells and what it ought to mean to us here and now. Because if you're the sort of person that has never understood suffering, never experienced it personally, that you have never had someone that you love suffer, never had someone that you love even die, that the grave is not your destination, and you will never die here in this mortal life, Easter has very little to say to you. But for everybody else, for everyone else, Easter is for you. If you know what suffering and hardship is in this life, then Easter is for you. If you know what it's like to have the aches and the pains of your body and of your heart. That Easter is for you. If you know what it's like to be estranged from someone that you care for, or you know they care for you, and you just can't find the words, or you can't find the acts to make it right, you're not <coughs> sure exactly how things got as bad as they got, how can we bind them back together, how can we get to where we used to be, if you ever had a sensation like that, Easter's for you. If you've ever felt like somewhere, somehow, inside of me is still kind of bent. It's still kind of broken. No matter how hard I try, I keep slipping, I keep falling, I keep failing, I keep flopping. Easter's for you. If you have watched someone else whom you love hurt, suffer, or cry, and wish and hope there was anything at all you could do to make it better, that you can just sort of take it from them because they're too small 
or because they're too old, or because you care for them too much, that they're in pain and they're hurting, and you just want to pull it right from them and say, I'll take it, I'll carry it, don't let it happen to them, let it happen to me, but no matter what you do, it doesn't change anything. If you've ever felt that, if you've ever known that, Easter's for you. If you've never stood at the grave of one you love, friend, family member, Spouse, child, you look at that ground, is that all there is? Is it just dirt? Is it just dust? Is it just grass that grows and now they're gone? If you've ever felt that, if you've ever experienced that, if it might happen to you one day, then Easter is for you. carry something in your own heart. Maybe you carry the scars that come from others' actions or from others' words. And no matter how hard you try, you can't seem to let it go. No matter how hard you scrub on the inside, it never seems to go away. Or even when you think everything's fine, all it takes is a word, all it takes is a memory, all it takes is a flash, and all of a sudden it's right back there again. If you carry something that you've done or said to someone else, those words have escaped your mouth and it's wounded them, and it's hurt them, and it's cut them on the inside. And you thought, if I could only go back, I would, I would take those words and I would swallow them so they never hurt it. I would take those words and I would, I would pull them back inside of me and I would bury them so it never hurt them. I would go back in time, and I would turn left instead of turning right, or I'd go up instead of going down. I wouldn't disappoint them that time. I wouldn't hurt them that time. I wouldn't say that thing or do that thing. I had the chance to help them, to bless them, to make them feel loved or significant, and I let them down. I neglected them, or I turned the wrong way. If only, if only, if only, if you've ever felt that, if you've ever known that, Easter is for you. That's why we're ringing bells. That's why I say it changes everything. I'm not saying changes everything because I'm wearing a collar and I'm wearing a liturgical poncho. <clears throat> I am saying this changes everything because I stake my own life on this. I say it changes everything because throughout history, faithful men and women have staked their lives on it as well. If our hope in Christ is only for this world, this mortal life, we are to be paid. Sad because it's not. The apostles who saw this, men and women who knew that he had been raised from the dead, who saw him suffer and die, who knew that he was in a tomb, who knew the stone had been rolled away, and who saw him, who touched him, who ate and drank with him, willing to even lay down their own lives, some of them tortured, some of them killed, because they knew this day changed everything. <laughs> He was the chief cornerstone, and he bound them together just like he binds us together. And in this life and in the life to come, to be straight and strong and solid and true. And it is the Lord's doing, not our own. So in those times where we wish we could make stuff better, are those times where we wish we could go back in time and, and unsay words or undo actions. In those times where we can only look at someone suffer or even look at their mortal remains. And say if only but only. Easter says our actions and our words are never the end. Our suffering and our loss never the end. Our difficulty and our pain, our failures and disappointments, our hurts and hurting each other, it is not the end. He is victorious over death. He is victorious through life. And he, the first fruits of the new creation, bears witness and testimony that God says, I am not done with you. I am not done with your life, or your pain, or your hurts, or your failures, or your faults. I am not done with my world, my own son, my own life. 
offered to bring you home, offered to answer what our own actions and words never can fix. Easter is for you. And that's what we're ringing the bell. Things I care about. Things I remember. Things that hurt me. This is not the end. And so I ring a bell. Because thanks be to God, it's not the end. In ways that I remember standing over bedsides. In ways that I've stood over gravesides. And I ring a bell. Because that's not the end either. In ways that I consider my own life. The ways that my body sometimes feel like the warranty is expired. <laughs> the ways that I look at my kids and I want so much good for them and I don't know if I'm doing good enough. <coughs> the ways that I look at you guys in this place, in this parish, the people of this neighborhood and desire the Lord's best and maybe feel like I come up short. I ring bells because it's ultimately not up to me. I ring bells because it's not ultimately doomed by my failures or my hurts. He is the first fruits of a new creation, redemption, reconciliation, restoration, resurrection. And it is because of this day. It is because of Easter morning. It is because the Lord's Passover lamb has been sacrificed so the debt would pass over us, not just for a night, but for a lifetime and forever. And that lamb has returned now as a Lord. My failings are not the end. My life is not the end. My death is not the end. So I ring bells. Because even when it's hard, my trust is the devil. Our chief cornerstone who binds us together and keeps us strong and solid and straight and true. All that we do, all that we are, comes back to this day, these acts, this moment. For on this day, the Lord God Almighty Himself, He has acted when we could not. Therefore, we ought to rejoice. We ought to ring bells. We ought to hug eggs, eat chocolate, and have some brunch, and be glad in it. For this is the day of days. It is the feast of feasts. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. 